All right, hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna to be giving you a, a recipe for conductive ink that is made from ink, okay? So there are three conductive liquids, and I'm going to be also covering what they do because it's getting kind of ridiculous as far as like, why do I need all three? And I'll show you why you need all three, okay? So I brought some examples. It's a teacher thing. Let me show you which ones I would use on what surfaces and why. There's a base for all this, okay? The base for this one is Mod Podge, all right? Because it has a Mod Podge base, it allows it to go over wax, anything, anything. I've never seen a surface that this does not go on, okay? It's also water-based, which makes it easy to clean out your brushes. It makes it so if it dries on the brush, you're screwed, but you can always take it off with acetone. It's very universal. It covers over, like, let's say this surface was very shiny, all right? It's been shellacked. Actually, the cohesion needs to be there for the glue based ink to stick okay so that's where the Mod Podge based comes in so this is a glue base it's very thick and you can see you know like when I use it on glass It's got its dark areas and it's got its light areas. So, you can kind of see the strokes, right? Because you can see the strokes, that also means that it's a gap filler. Okay, so it does really go in there. And let's say I was painting the base of this and I wanted to make it conductive. Well, the, the gap between the stone and the base would get filled in with this type, okay? So if I went to go paint this bear, for example, all the fur would get filled in. I wouldn't want that. I wanna preserve the detail. So really good jewelry making. It's really good if you want to gap fill. It sticks to everything. It's universal. And it's free, you know what I mean? Just like, it's very cheap to make. Cool. Let's go on to an ink-based one and what you would use that for. Okay, so ink-based. Ink-based, it's this one. This is the one I'm gonna be showing you how to use or how to make in the video right after this brief demonstration. When you go to use this, it's hard to see your brush strokes and it can go on really thin and it has the same level of conductive power that the other one has. I guess you can't see that too much because of the, because of the fact that it's black. But yes, very thin liquid, watery, but still conductive. All right, so because it's so thin, it allows you to do stuff like this. I could easily paint this surface. It's not primed whatsoever. And now it's conductive. It dries pretty quick but not instantaneous. Also, what's nice about this is it dries with um, a heat source without retarding it. Now, that means you can put it in a food dehydrator, you could hit it with a hair dryer, and it would dry it a lot faster. It's also good for 
getting down in the cracks and crevices of things like oh man so it's a big game changer I like these are a good seller for me but um, what happens is to get down in that crevasse right there I can literally put one drop of this stuff in there and it will totally take up all the little tiny cracks and crevices without filling them too much uh, here's an example of its use. I didn't want to lose any of the detail on this little demon character. Or this deer. Cool. So, just hang tight and you'll see the recipe for that one here in a moment, along with the instructions on how to make it. Okay, the third one is in a link below if you want the recipe for it it's a game changer it really is uh, you can watch some of my other videos on how I use this but the advantages of this it's one it's solvent based so it's completely waterproof two it soaks into organics so it seals it much like a wood rot remover wood it goes into all the cracks and then expands inside it without losing detail. Uh, so what happens is you can take literally something from your garden and dip it into this. Uh, like use tree bark for example. I could take it and dip it in. And I like taking an blowing on the surface a little bit to distribute it a little bit and you get all the detail of the bark still okay and again it's sealed right yeah so that's the other two can't do that the other two require that you have some kind of sealer underneath an organic where this one works without the sealer that's the nice part about it the downfall okay? because I'll be honest one of the things that you cannot do with this you cannot take let's say this is super glue down here that are holding these rocks if I go to paint solvent on top of super glue it melts the super glue and then it no longer is conductive because the graphite has sunken in to a shell okay so don't use this on plastic use it only on organic or glass surface I couldn't paint this bear with this because it's solvent based the solvent would eat into the bear the solvent will not eat into your crystals the solvent will not eat into organics it will eat into lacquer so I couldn't paint this bone that's why all three is very required because again you want to composition things differently so a lot of times if I'm using this this type right here I'll do something like this I'm looking for my dem oh yeah demonstration pieces I will first dip it in there and then coat it with a conductive surface um, so I would dip it into my electroforming tank for you know roughly a, just a small amount of time enough for it to get copper on it and that seals it fully and preserves it to the point where I can just like now store this somewhere else and use it for a later composition so if you just had this in the field and you go to dip it and then you bring it home then you electroform the piece. Now it's good for ever. Then later you can add thicker copper to it. All right, sweet. So I hope you enjoyed that little rundown. And now, as promised, I'll share with you how to mix the ink-based graphite ink. Enjoy. Alright, so you're first going to need a few things. 
you're going to need a piece of glass. Doesn't matter how big. You're going to need some Generals Pure Graphite Powder or any graphite powder. And it has to be graphite, not charcoal. You're going to need some speedball ink. Probably not this much. This is quite a bit. But it has to be India ink. The speedball brand works the best, I found. I've tried two others, but this seems to be the most resistant. You're going to need a container that's airtight. I'm using a mason jar. Oh, you're going to need something to measure, which is right in front of my face. Sweet. So, I'm going to be using this shot glass that has um, some milliliters on it. Now, it doesn't matter. It just has to be in about equal proportions, and I'm going to show you also how to test it to make sure that, you know, let's say you get different graphite paint, you can still come up with the same formula. Because a lot of times I'll, I'll share a formula and they're like, well, it didn't come out the right way because I used X and X. Um, I'm going to show you how to test it so it gets the same results no matter what kind of graphite you use. You're also going to need a multimeter. Um, it doesn't have to be an expensive one. But it has to have this symbol on it. That one. Ohms. Cool. So, go gather your things and come back. Alright, so you probably didn't go very far. I'm going to actually change my mind and use this because these are disposable. So, cool. Because Indie Ink, once it's on something, and I like this measuring cup, I don't want to ruin it. Alright, so disposable shot glasses. Also, going to need a pair of gloves. Okay, so gloves, definitely. In the ink, not good on the skin. Only because it takes a while to get it off. All right. So I'm going to start out. Filling that up to that line. Again, you just have to have some kind of indicator of 50-50 to start with. Again, I'm going to show you how to perfect the formula. This, pouring this into this, you might want to get like a piece of paper as a kind of a chute. Cool. So, I'm going to start out just pouring this into here. And this into here. So now I got tons of graphite. Stirring rod, stick. Okay, so the name of the game is to get within like 1 to 4K of resistance, okay, ohms. 
So, here's how the game's played. You take a piece of glass, but glass, and you draw yourself a nice line. Now, we let that line dry, and we'll be, I'll come back and show you why. All right, so once the line is dry, take your multimeter. I have it set to 20K. By the way, you can use a hair dryer. That's what I did to dry the ink very quickly. And I'm just going to put it in there. Okay, so check that out. That's awesome. 3K in a, like a two inch area is unbelievable. All right, so that's how you mix it. Um, so what about containers? Because that was one of the main questions I get all the time on my other recipe. So with what I just showed you, I would highly suggest some kind of container that's very um, airtight, okay? Put a marble in the bottom of it. I want you to go like that, and it will stir up the graphite. And then it's ready to use, okay? Every once in a while, every, I don't know, five minutes or so, Make sure you do that again, okay? Test it. I mean, if you, if you think you're in doubt, test it. Yeah, I like glass because it, it really does tell the, the story about it and helps you diagnose conductive, conductive ink. So one of the things you can play around with is the formula you can add or subtract graphite. But remember to check it with a multimeter. Another thing you should probably check is when it dries, how hard is it to scrape off the surface of glass? Okay, if it can come off glass, then you're in trouble. And not really, but I mean like with sufficient force too. Just maybe just lightly go over it and say, oh okay, that's not too bad. And you can definitely tell the difference between some of the brands, like the Mod Podge one, when I run my finger over it, I can definitely feel that texture. This one, I cannot feel the texture whatsoever on it. But do some testing, have fun with it. You know, like really, that's what it's all about. It's just how to have fun and what am I gonna use it for in my art, okay? So, I hope you enjoyed how to make conductive ink from ink.